All right, guys, I'm here with Drew from Bison Overland Campers. And Drew, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Do you watch Adventure Build and what's your favorite show? You know, I haven't yet, but uh, I think I've seen it. That may be a lie, but I'm going to go back and, and definitely check it out. So he is a, vo a viewer. Awesome. Definitely seen it before, yeah. All right, Drew. Yeah. So what is Bison Overland Campers? So we, we started out as we wanted to be a, a lightweight flatbed shell. There, there just wasn't a shell flatbed on the market that, that offered what we wanted. Um, I came from having slide-ins. I, I wanted to get a flatbed to have more space, and I couldn't afford one. And if they would offer a shell, I possibly could have. So I, I started converting an old slide-in and, um, and started working on, we wanted a lot of inside-outside access for storage so you don't have to climb in and out. One of the fridge there, we can just grab a beer easily. Um, so one day, me and my buddy Cody, it was right when, when COVID started, uh, we were hanging out in my shop, the one I was messing with. COVID started, our, our day jobs, the office is closed. So we're like, let's just build one and, you know, see what happens. Worst case, we sell it, get our money back. And I think as we, we started going, like, you know, I started sharing on Instagram, and it just snowballed. People got started getting interest. They're like, all right, this could maybe be something. And, that was about, what, about a year and a half ago, and uh, it's kind of where we're at now. So it's we haven't really had a chance to kind of slow down. It's just I think we got our first order last June, and uh, we're up to like 21, 22 orders, and it's just keeps on going up. So. That's impressive. I wish I could have been that productive during COVID. I just drank beer. So well, that's somebody had to do that too. So <laughs> we did a lot of that too as well. But uh, it it's worked out well for us because you know the the market uh, during COVID's gone up and. We didn't have anything to do, so it's it's worked out. It's an unfortunate you know time, but uh, it's we've made the best of it. So yeah, this Tacoma platform right behind me is amazing. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So you know, Tacomas are big, uh, big market for this, and they got to stay light. So we've been since the beginning. We've wanted to do composite, and so I've been kind of dreaming of doing this. And uh, obviously, with the shell, it keeps the weight down low. We haven't got the official weight on this being a, a prototype. We are going to change a few things. It'll drop the weight. But uh, we're shooting for, don't hold me to it, we're shooting for like six, 650 for the for the shell. Um, and then, you know, add stuff to it. So we've been happy. We we finished it up on Tuesday, I think. Our electric 12-volt guy was putting the last zip tie on. I was backing out, headed I-70 on Kansas, and, you know, I was cruising 70, 75, some 80. and. Did great. You don't really feel it's back there. We re-geared with uh, Nitro Gear 529s. That made a huge going up hills. RPMs get up a little bit, but it just it takes off. So um, I'm I'm a fan of the Tacoma. I've been a been a full size guy all the time. Um, I miss the full size, but I've been impressed. You know, unless a big wind comes along down I-70, I don't really know it's there. So I'm I'm happy with this setup. Yeah, Tacoma's a big market. I actually have a Tacoma, yeah. and uh, that would look really good in the back of my truck. Yes. Probably would, yeah. All right, so what are some of the stuff that you guys put in them? I know you said you just do a basic shell, but is there any other things that you would build out in this, yeah, so in this platform? We'll, we'll, offer, uh, we'll offer interiors. Um, we're kind of playing with maybe having, you know, kind of like just the kitchen set up like this and adding to it. That's kind of a nice thing. We want to start out with the shell, it's fully usable. You can put camp chairs in it, you can cook in it, you can do whatever you want, and you can slowly build as you go. Um, Dustin with Vice Customs does all the interior stuff, the interior that's in the garage over here. He can do full interior for those. Um, so for, for the components of the whole camper, the campers I come from are very kind of flimsy, you know, a little branch could dent or something. So we wanted to do real strong trim. So it's an eighth inch aluminum. Um, on our aluminum builds, we use thicker skin, just, you know, just be able to hold up and not, you know, if you hit a little twig or something, it's not going to put a dent in it or a crease down the side of it. So we tried to, everything, we tried not to use the general, just, you know, like mass produced RV products that are just kind of cheap, you know, flimsy stuff. So like our windows and doors are all turn overland. We've been real happy with everything we use for windows, doors, cargo hatches, turn overland, real good quality. Um, it's just, you know, we try to, with the price point we're at, we try to have the products and material we use just kind of a step, you know, above that that you don't see in the, the competition that uses just the small, like, kind of stamped trim and stuff. Yeah, the quality of this thing is amazing. I walked around just for a minute, and you yeah. could tell just the fine detail work is spot on. Do you guys make the platform to this? 
So for the flatbed tray? Yes. No, so this is uh, Summit Expedition Trucks. They're out of, was it Alberta? Up in Canada. Okay. Um, been real happy with it. This was their first, uh, first production one off of after the prototype. And the way they mount them, they, they mount in the factory locations, vehicle specific. So you can't really, you could do it in your driveway. You don't have to weld brackets and, you know, stuff like traditional, you know, uh, flatbeds do. So you bolt those in, slides right in, it's perfect. Uh, their storage options are great. Um, they're, they're great to work with. We've got multiple customers that are using theirs. We recommend them. And, um, you know, it's, it's like the mitts. It's like the Norweld, but I think a little better quality. The way they mount, a lot stronger. Um, so I definitely recommend those. They they make them for gladiators. They make them for these. They'll be doing full size. They've got the the uh, what do you call it? The little side kind of things that'll fold up if the camper's not on. So it's actually like a truck bed. They've got a water tank storage and stuff. So it's we're, we've been real happy. Ralph, the owner there, he's his customer service great on it and his uh, design and everything's been great. So awesome. And what does something like this run? What's the price variation? So in shell form, basically with uh, finish out without any like power management components without. At the fridge, all that stuff. We're starting at 26, um, and that's it's got the lighting, it's got everything you see, just not like the component trance in it. So you can get out camp, do everything you want, and then we can add options from there. All right, so this is Cody, Drew's partner, and uh, Cody's got some stuff you'd like to talk about. <laughs> what is that exactly that we were talking about? Um, right. So what exactly is your component to this? Man, that's a great question. So. Um, I've thought about this and I answer this on a regular basis, but when you think about what it would take to start a company like this or to start a camper company, you think about all the obvious stuff, production, sales, marketing, design, all the things that come to mind first, Drew does all that stuff. <laughs> so I do all the boring stuff behind the uh, scenes that nobody really wants to do. Um, keeps me from spending too much I basically money keep us from spending all our money. Yeah, there um, you go. You know, I, I'm trying to make sure that we're staying on top of um, just kind of all the admin things. Okay. Um, Man, I, I uh, you know, when, when Drew, like, you know, completely demoralizes one of our employees, I come back around and say, hey, man, you're doing a good job. We're really glad you're here. Uh, oh, moral support guy. That's yeah. him. Yeah. That he's yeah. the moral support yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> you know, so it takes all, ty all, all types. And, and uh, you know, I've just, I've been a really, I think Drew and I have, you know, just had a lot of fun through this thing. We've pretty much, are, I feel like Drew's like a brother at this point. We go back and forth. We argue, you know. But I think the coolest thing about what Drew and I have is we really, we never point fingers at each other and we never refuse to do something and we and we don't we don't tear each other down and we don't criticize each other i mean we get frustrated from time to times in the heat of battle but you know at the end of the day we it, we get over it pretty quick and we go to work well it definitely takes two to tango and you guys are killing it with the designs here all right where can we find you guys at so bisonoverland.com is our website we've done almost all of our marketing or actually all of it. it's pretty much been on instagram so bison overland campers uh, Facebook too, pretty much anything that's on. We always just send people to Instagram because that seems where it's most of our stuff, oddly enough. Um, yeah, and then of course, the uh, we've done a lot of feature videos with Phil with Down to Mob. You can see some walk around videos on his, um, and he's, you know, uh, featured. I think we, we've done some on this, have no one on that yet, but uh, yeah. So now we can send people to your page to check this out, and yeah. Badass, double plug. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure, Pleasure guys. You. Thanks yep. so much. Thanks. Hey, guys. I'm here with Blake from Thule. And, Blake, my first question for you is, do you watch Adventure Belt and what's your favorite show? I, I haven't watched it, but uh, if you can point me in the right direction, I'll tune in. Ah, I love the answer. I love it. All right. So, exactly. So, I know Thule recently um, purchased Tapui. Yep. Can you tell me how that transaction went and, and just kind of the reason behind it? Sure, yeah. So the uh, acquisition was finalized in uh, Q4 of 2018. Um, we've been sort of watching uh, that part of the market for a little while, uh, kind of all things overland and camping, looking to break into kind of uh, really the camping side of things versus just outdoor recreation. And uh, rooftop tents were certainly on fire then. So. Uh, we looked at Tapui as sort of the leader in the space, certainly at the time, um, and uh, you know it made sense to, to kind of follow through with the acquisition. So, yeah, it's been great. We're really thrilled to have this portfolio a part of our line. Excellent. Yeah, I know Tapui's definitely been a staple in the industry. So, uh, this one here that we're looking at, this one kind of caught my eye. This is different, isn't it? Yeah, so this was released uh, this spring brand new. Uh, it's called the Tuli Tapui Foothill. 
Um, and really what makes it unique is that it uh, only eats up about half of your roof real estate compared to a traditional rooftop tent. So we leave some room on the other side of your roof for a cargo box, kayak, bikes, etc. So uh, looking to cater to that kind of multi-sport uh, enthusiast who wants to do some other things when they're out camping. Yeah, before I knew you guys had this, I actually saw this on the road, and when it passed by, I thought, well, that's weird, it's like a half of a tent, I don't sure. know, so it's super, super innovative. So, what, does this sleep too? It sleeps too, it's uh, on the cozier side of, of two, so you want to make sure you're friendly with uh, whoever you're sharing it with, you know, versus this uh, Low Pro 2, which is a more traditional size too, okay. but absolutely doable for two, yeah. Excellent, and what's the weight on this? Uh, the weight, uh, I want to say, is 105, I believe, 105 pounds, yep. That's pretty light. And what's the uh, price point like? Uh, 1799 if I recall correctly, yeah. Excellent. And obviously, so now with the acquisition of Tapui, is there is Tapui production still there, or is, has the production trans transferred to someplace else? It has. Uh, we've brought that production uh, in-house, really. So uh, we still have a facility out in SoCal, California, uh, for a little bit longer where Tapui was originally based, but we're using... Uh, all of Thule, or all of uh, yeah, Thule's uh, distribution centers around uh, the country and, and world now, actually. Uh, the acquisition, uh, while I think made a lot of sense here in the U.S. and in North America, we've seen in Europe where rooftop tents are a newer phenomenon. It's really starting to catch fire there as well, which is uh, it's cool to see. Excellent. And obviously you can expect the same Tapui quality in the product, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, in fact, uh, one of the things Thule's known for with uh, a lot of our racks is our, our testing. We, we tend to have industry-leading testing because we are adhering to uh, European standards where there are rules, regulations, and laws uh, in some cases. So we've been able to take uh, a lot of the product that they had that we uh, simply acquired and stuff that we've developed since then and apply all of our testing. So, uh, yeah, quality should not be a, a question or a concern. Yeah. Awesome. And do you guys have any intention of getting into the hardtop realm in rooftop tents? Yeah, so uh, we did have a model uh, called the uh, Thule Tapui High Box and then a wedge version of that as well. Uh, we're currently working through um, a few uh, uh, hardware issues with it, but uh, we should be uh, relaunching it uh, in the near future. So uh, yeah, hard shell, we certainly want to be a part of our portfolio. We know that's popular certainly with this crowd. Uh, truck owners, etc. So um, hard shell will definitely be a part of our future. Yeah, excellent. I know Tapui or uh, Thule has just been killing it with the innovation here. You guys have gotten into camera bags. I know Trevor right here. He's running a Thule camera bag. So yeah, you guys have just gotten into a lot of different realms. Um, do you have any more things that you're going to be coming out with in the future that we can look forward to? Yeah, so uh, you, you hit the nail on the, on the head, really. Uh, in terms of where we uh, want to continue to progress, we obviously want to maintain our leadership uh, position in the, the outdoor space as it relates to racks and, and tents and whatnot. Uh, but our soft goods, our juvenile products, strollers, uh, things like that, child bike seats, are areas uh, where we see a lot of potential. Uh, we want to be looked at as a lifestyle brand when it comes to bringing your life or carrying the things you care about and that could be a tent on the roof of your car, your child in a stroller, your camera gear in a backpack, etc. So um, yeah, we're, we're looking to broaden that portfolio and really the perception of the brand as a, as a, a whole, I'd say. Awesome. All right. Well, Blake, thank you so much for your time uh, and tell everyone where they can find you guys at. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Um, uh, so check out www.tuli.com. You'll see uh, everything that we offer as a brand. Uh, all of our products and we have a ton of uh, retailers all throughout the, the country so um, use that website as well for dealer locators and, and uh, if you want to see something up close and personal. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. I'm here with Ty at Red Tail Overland and Ty my first question for you is do you watch Adventure Built and what's your favorite show? Whoo, that's a tough one. I have not seen Adventure Built, no. Um, but but I'm going to. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I know I led that out a little bit. <laughs> uh, favorite show? Gosh. Um, I really like Gold Rush on Discovery Channel. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I think it's, I, I don't know. It's like my guilty pleasure. It speaks to you. It yeah, speaks to you. Totally. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Ty. So I was actually just talking to Trevor about a rooftop tent that was clamshell with hard sides. And you guys actually have one. I didn't know these were actually in production anywhere. So tell me all about this thing. Yeah, so this is the first of its kind. We call it a rooftop camper uh, because it doesn't have the canvas or the soft sided. Um, so this is going to be a fully carbon fiber and billet aluminum structure. Uh, it's fully insulated, so everything's foam core. Um, so it's not, it's going to have insulation on the sidewalls, the roof, and all of that. 
So it was kind of born out of, uh, we owned a rooftop tent and really liked the idea that we could get to all these places. We could do the Alpine loop. We could do some, some pretty good wheeling with it. Um, but then kind of have this nice place to sleep, but in bad weather, it was, it was less than ideal. Right. Anytime it was windy, the, the walls were flapping, we wouldn't sleep at all. If it rained, we Just couldn't... Just like last night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we couldn't open the windows. If it rained, it would get cold and damp. And we wanted, a, we wanted the same mobility, but we wanted a four-season unit that you know, we could set up in wind or snow or rain or whatever and still be able to see out of it. Um, but yet we still wanted it to open up and be as open as a rooftop tent uh, when the weather was nice and still be able to enjoy that kind of open air setup. Excellent. So you mentioned carbon fiber. How much does it weigh? So this one is our our largest model. We do two different models. This is the 110. We also do a 90, which is 20 inches shorter. So this is the biggest one with all the all the goodies in it. It's about 300 pounds. Well, that's pretty light, even for something this large. Yeah, yeah. Sorry that that almost killed kill you. Me. Yeah. Murder hornets. Murder they're, hornets. They're a thing. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening. Um, I right, thought so, that was 2020, but I guess. <laughs> COVID killed murder hornets. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so, yeah, that the other cool thing is that the roof rack is integrated into the shell, so the crossbars are integrated, so you don't have to have, like, a front runner rack or a pioneer rack or anything like that. You can just mount it to your car, and then you can mount an awning, actually, to, to the side of this. Awesome. And... I definitely noticed a lot more than just a rooftop tent. What other accessories and stuff do you have on there that just make it very unique? Yeah, so this is uh, fully solar. So we have 330 watts of solar on the roof. Uh, that's going to charge a 60 amp hour lithium battery bank, which is going to run uh, a little sine wave inverter. So you've got 110 power up there. you got USB outlets. Uh, you have a diesel heater up there, which is a big one. And then you've got dimmable LED interior lighting on the inside and then the outside. Everything is switched on a Switch Pro panel, so there's a panel up on the roof, but there's also an app on my phone, so I can turn these outside lights on from the driver's seat. Uh, I can dim everything and control everything there. That's pretty awesome. Eh? You can see the uh, controller right there in the middle for easy access when you're going to bed. That's great. Yeah, right. So we wanted it so either side could turn it on or off without climbing over the other one. Um, the other very cool thing that this has is a pass-through. So there's a a floor a door in the floor so you can get up from the sunroof into the now is that specific to this model with this truck or is that just standard on all of your uh the tents you make it's an option so we on this model it's up front but we can also put it in the back so you could put it over like a truck topper right. and come up through the back or uh we've got a couple van builds where we're doing like a permanent pass through and you'll actually be able to open the unit from the inside so you won't have to go outside at all Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, how does the Max Air Fan, how does that work with just a, such a small uh, uh, space? It it's, works really well, yeah. We wanted a big, real fan because we've had experience with some of the smaller stuff, and it doesn't, just, it doesn't move enough air. Uh, so we wanted a big 12-inch fan, and it's four-speed, and um, it's simple. You know, it's a manual crank lid and all that. But we angled it in such a way so the fan opens like this. You can run it if it's raining. You can still get ventilation. That's great. Yeah. I've heard with diesel heaters and the rooftop tents, yeah. they create a lot of condensation. Is that an issue with this at all, or does a fan just take care of all of that? So condensations, it depends on a lot of factors. It typically is an issue because there's no insulation or minimal insulation. So a big reason of why we built this the way we did is because it's fully insulated. So that's the walls, that's the ceiling, the windows, everything's insul insulated, and there's no... Um, we're missing a couple covers on this one, but there's no exposed aluminum in the entire unit. So you're not going to get those same condensation issues um, that you would with something else. And you're not going to get the mattress condensation issues because the floor is insulated. So like a honeycomb panel doesn't provide insulation, but a foam core panel does. And with the core we're using, we get about 80% of the value of like a polyiso, which is typically your best kind of rigid foam insulation so it's very well insulated and it really uh, eliminates that condensation issue and then we've got the fan and the heat um, to combat that you know beyond all those other measures so. awesome sounds like you've got your bases covered on that one all right one last question probably the one that's going to be the shocker is what do these retail for so we range from 19.5 up to 34.5, depending on the size and the trim level. So we have three trim levels. We have a base, which is just the structure. 
it's going to include all the doors, windows, uh, but none of the electronics. And then we have an Ascent, which is going to have some of the solar, some of the batteries, lights and fan. And then we have the Summit, which adds full solar, full batteries, uh, lights, fan, heat is the big one. And then it's got the wood trim and some, some custom touches like that. Excellent. All right. Well, tell everyone where you can be found at. So we're redtailoverland.com, uh, Instagram, redtailoverland, Facebook as well. So, Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Yeah, man. Likewise. Thank you.